ITT, incidents slash accidents you witnessed during your service. During OSUT, one of my drill sergeants got the non-trainers to stack lockers on top of each other and took out all the mattresses and used them to block the door to our bay. My first weekend at my first duty station, the super drunk guy was asked to leave a girl alone at the barracks party, and he pulled out a pistol and started blasting rounds in the general direction of the guys who told him to knock it off, then pointed the smoking gun at several people saying he'd kill us all. Then about 100 MPs appeared out of nowhere and had us all hugging the ground at gunpoint. Nobody was hit, dude was arrested, and I had to testify at his court-martial later. As a prior corpsman, I've seen some dumb shit. Marines got drunk and decided to test a theory of theirs. They took two mattresses and taped them around some PFC. Then, with the PFC's consent, they threw him off a second-story balcony. The PFC broke his leg and I was the first responder. A chief who drank way too much and pissed himself while other chiefs were trying to prop him up, he must have been going through a tough time because he was bawling the whole time. This was in Dubai before we got back on the ship. A girl who kept coming into medical for bacterial vaginosis, she said she didn't like the way the ship water felt on her skin, so she rarely bathed. The doctor wanted to get her put up for a psych evaluation as well. A guy with 9 out of 10 of his toenails ingrown. He was afraid to come see the doc because he didn't want his LPO giving him shit. Almost caught a malingering charge because of how bad his feet were. When I was in security forces tech school, we were at the FTX. They put the team retard on internal patrol. As he crossed down below under my tower, I asked him to refill my canteen. Several minutes later, he comes back and chucks it at my face like a football and chipped my leftmost incisor tooth. Every other person on insert lightly lobbed it upwards, but this double-digit IQ FAS baby chucked it like he was throwing a frag at a communist foxhole. Also, there was a screeching coming from the woods. At first, I thought it was Op 4, but the cadre all pulled us back into the FOB and went out searching for the source of the noise. I asked other people who went through tech school around the same time as me if they heard screeching while at the FTX. Apparently it's just the army. They like to screw with us. After nine years, I don't have anything particularly unique or extraordinary. But I do have a funny anecdote of an incident that occurred around Camp Fuji. Out in town, there was this Chinese lady who was crazy for American cock. In the two or so months we spent around there, I'd run into her a number of times during a period of several weeks. Roaming the streets of Gotemba and at a small bar I'd frequent, trying to get the guys to go back with her to her hotel room. It didn't matter what you looked like, she'd be so brazen going as far as approaching guys and grabbing their cock and balls in the public streets. Anyway, one night she took one of my marines that we were out with and he went back to her hotel. A couple hours later, time was ticking and I sent one of my guys to go get him and break things up. Knowing we were going to be out past curfew, I called up my buddy on duty and asked for him to log us in and we ended up sneaking past the gate and getting in an hour or so after curfew. It was honestly a small miracle that we were able to find him. Also, that lady was actually Chinese. At the bar we frequented, an older Japanese man was interested in her and I had to explain to him in his language that she was Chinese. Sometimes I ponder if she was just some crazy nymphomaniac or if she had some strange ulterior motive to gather intelligence or get guys in trouble by entrapping them or something. Good times. I had an interesting group of friends there among us, sailors and marines, was a salary man, a couple pensioners, a barmaid and a stripper. Knowing a bit of Japanese can go a long way. That time a dude got his fingers crushed in the drive wheels of an M1 Abrams, Picture four hot dogs after OP's mom sat on them. That time the AS-3 captain, Black, butt-raped the chemo lieutenant, White and Dorky, while hammered. He went to Leavenworth. 
That time a dude got kidnapped and beaten in a basement by Polish nationals. The major alcoholic PFC who drove his M2 Bradley drunk on more than one occasion. That time a tabbed former bat boy got walked in on while he was riding big ass dildo with a skirt and thigh highs on. Negligent discharge with 25mm and M1 made gun. Negligent discharge with M2A ones. Negligent discharge with small arms that almost no scope the BC, CSM, and several COs at different times. The gay niggas who gave the whole battalion pink eye by fucking in the common showers while deployed. That dude who turned out to be some kind of insane gay BDSM enthusiast as well as a former mid-level KKK member. That time a dude got caught sucking a dude off in the connex at NTC during the box. Imagine the smell. That guy that got literal AIDS, that guy that made a functional barracks meth lab, that dial guy that got busted in a steroid ring by NCIS, that guy that hid an underage girl in his wall locker, that guy that stabbed a corporal during field day, that guy that fucked a trainee, that guy that became a trainee, that guy that tried to choke out his platoon sergeant during PT formation on a bad acid trip, that guy that ate the banana, that guy that negligently discharged and shot the ship. That guy that smoked K2 and salvia in the barracks out of a Gatorade bottle. Those guys that went UA after smuggling for the cartel. That guy that didn't and got arrested. Those guys that ran a train on Bridget the Midget in the barracks. That guy that took a shit right outside of the PX. That guy that got caught beaten in the duty hut. That guy that only brought 300 pounders back to the barracks and called it Hoggin. That guy who got caught sucking another guy's dick. That guy who threw a beer bottle at the OOD. Those guys that started a company sized brawl in a P-way underway. That guy always talking about feet. That guy that pulled a loaded M9 on another guy. From the halls of Montezuma. That guy who kept a live mortar round in his wall locker on the top shelf for shiggles. That guy who drunkenly waved the loaded ATI MP40 he kept in his barracks room at PMO on a Friday night and nearly got shot. That guy who put too much weight on the leg press at French Creek extended too far and inverted his knees like a Gmod ragdoll. That guy who was cuffed by CID in front of everyone at field day formation, he thought knowingly sexting a 14 year old girl was a good idea. I guess his older, hot ass wife being in college six hours away was just too much to handle. That guy who drunkenly threw a sharpened broomstick at the duty NCO from third deck like Leonidas in 300 and cut his face open. That guy who chugged a beer with one hand while holding his IV bag up with the other. Par for the course at an infantry battalion. We love you, Doc. That guy who stole two rifles and nearly fucked over the Christmas plans for everyone stationed at Camp Lejuin. That guy who negligently discharged an M203 and almost murdered our good guy BC and everyone else in the COC tent. I didn't see this happen, but the guy in another unit who was messing with his Glock 19 in the barracks and accidentally shot his roommate in the back of the head while he was playing Battlefield, killing him instantly. That guy with 81s who fired a short round at range 400 that landed on us instead of the target. Nobody died, but I will never look at human blood the same way again. If you were at 29 Palms, March 2020, you heard about it. Simper Gumby, the retarded supply CPL that ordered tracers for the range, the retarded NCOIC first sergeant fucking Lamau that said, fuck it, why not, on a dry ass summer day in Texas. The look of, I honestly can't believe a first sergeant is this retarded from the fire chief after a massive brush fire got started. Unit getting kicked off that base's range permanently. Summer 2020. Infantry Battalion deployed to CENTCOM during COVID. Most of HQ units sets up shop and HQ building I worked a 06 to 18 in has a duty marine immediately at the front of the door. Just some schmuck with a CON 3 weapon at all times. 12 hour shifts. 
Air Force also required some Marines to help stay in post with their Sec 4 duties. This inherently requires an SOG for supervision. Basically, check up on dudes if they need water slash chow. Air Force requires SOG to carry shitty M9 and Con 3 at all times. Corporal buddy of mine has made SOG. Whatever, at least they give us a truck to drive. Be me. Finish work at HQ building. Start shooting the shit with comm dude I'm familiar with that happens to be on duty. Big Marine from the S4 shop comes by and joins in. Most of command is still present. But the day is basically winding down, so nobody is too dickish or about idle chatter. Nick Marine goes on a tiny rant on how shit ain't going well, and we all joke about him committing and hero for Talol's. Corporal Buddy comes in. Catch him up to speed. Nick Marine. God, sometimes I legit do think about popping my grape. Corporal Buddy unholsters and just hands him M9. Guy takes it. Flips off safety and racks the slide. We all watch for shits and giggles. Oh. Puts it to his temple. Oh. Slowly squeezes the trigger. Legit a quarter in pull. Oh. Pulls gun away and puts it back on safe. Nah, not today, man. A good five to ten kecks. Corporal buddy unloads, clears the weapon. Speak marine. Wait, it was loaded? Oh fucking well. Cam Girl Studio in one of the barracks. The room next to mine had two guys who would loudly fuck for literal hours. My roommate was busted for selling CP. A half-assembled saw was found in an empty room in the barracks during field day. While in Iraq, there was a guy who would suck you off for $50 or something of value. The only reason he was founded, due to an investigation regarding an increase in thefts. A guy who would pimp out his wife. The guy who set up a restaurant in the barracks. The guy who wore a butt plug all the time to prevent the demons from raping him. He went to a psych evaluation and wasn't seen again. While during a contraband search, a box of sex toys was found. Mine. The guy who set up a restaurant in the barracks? More details, please. How creative were his cooking processes? The guy was an amazing cook. He went to cooking school and worked as a chef before joining the army. He was really good at cooking great meals for cheap people who would pay him to cook, which evolved into him turning his barracks room into a restaurant. The prices were high, but if you didn't want whatever the dining facility was making or fast food, he was your best option. Sadly, he was ordered to stop because he wasn't allowed to have a grill top or fryer in the room. Never serve, but I do work in a warehouse. Stocking shelves. Have a new hire learning the forklift with two people with him teaching slash spotting. Have new hire attempt to take a pallet from the top shelf. One spotter notices something on the shelf. Probably a box in the wrong location. He was nitpicky like that. Says, hold up. Steps in front of the forks and goes to fix it. New guy hits the gas instead of braking. Fork punches straight through his lower back and almost out the front. Doctor says his lower half is permafucked and just cut him in half with some bags hanging out from the bottom of his abdomen. Don't know the full story. I just visited him once and got the rest from hearsay. We had a marine check-in, infantry battalion, a few days after we left for ITX. He reported to the RVE admin guys, all dark green marines, blacks. Then got his barracks room key. They told him, come back later to check in with first sergeant. They never ran his orders or contacted him at all to finish checking in. We were all at ITX, so fuck it. Why actually do their jobs? Classic admin move. For two and a half months, he was a paid skater, a ghost. Admin didn't say anything about him to anyone, even after we got back to LeJoyne. Sergeant Major didn't find out this kid exited until his MOS school called about his orders not being endorsed. It had been almost three months. He stopped into admin screaming bloody murder, broke the fancy new printer, and completely trashed their workspace. He lambasted each of them personally for being complete fuck-ups. He would never trust to have his back in combat. You couldn't hear a pin drop in Battalion HQ otherwise for almost 15 minutes. New Kid was taken from his barracks room, 
ordered to check in and then assigned to the company office as a retard who couldn't be trusted unsupervised. Everyone in admin got negative paperwork. Disclaimer, not from the US. Couple guys from my company out on a range. Lieutenant Colonel from somewhere else rocks up in battle rattle to join the fun. Our service rifles have a nasty tendency to negligently discharge when they're shot to shit. Lieutenant Colonel's rifle negligently discharges into his foot the moment he jumps out of his vehicle. Hit an artery. Two guys from the company proceed to TQ the man and do whatever else necessary. All in all, textbook first aid. Story hits the media, played off as unremarkable. What they don't say is that the Lieutenant Colonel was about 30 seconds from dying of blood loss. Two dudes from my company got Commander's coin and a cash bonus for what they did. Since I'm ineligible for service because of schizophrenia, I'm gonna tell you my uncle's story from the Soviet Army. Be uncle, last day at shitty Soviet military base, only the St. Petersburg cement factory from here on. It's a fucking Friday and command has left so your documents can't be processed by anyone on site. Go to squad lead and he tells you it's all good and you get to leave. Throw a fucking huge party in your barracks with three of your friends who are also leaving and two other guys from the neighboring barrack who are also leaving. The barrack next door is also known for being a bunch of stuck up assholes. Petersburg and Moscow area pullet babies. Spend the entire evening getting wasted, eating shitty half-burnt plov made by only Uzbek in the group, and smoking enough weed to kill a small to medium family of Afghans. As the partying dies down, it's dark outside, so decide it's the perfect time to leave. While leaving, walk into groups of two to the second barrack so that one of the guys can get his weed stash. First group goes into barracks room number two, where there's a single night watchman board. Get spooked. First group tells the night watch guy to fuck off and goes to pick up the stash. Night watchman decides to be a hero and goes to stop them. As they start to wrestle, the second group gets to the barracks, sees the struggle, go in and start beating the shit out of the night watch guy. Night watch asshole starts yelling he's gonna get everyone arrested for this. Uncle finally makes it into the barracks and sees four guys beating up the night watchman and decides, fuck it, why not? The fucking night watch guy pulls out a fucking pistol and starts screaming that he will shoot. One of the guys from the group who was behind the night watch guy hits him over the head with either a chair leg or a wooden broom. It was too dark to see. The night watch guy's head breaks. He drops the pistol and starts to fucking leg it outside to the officer's tent. My uncle decides, hey, let's just grab our stuff and leave. Except everyone is so fucking drunk that they just get turned around for a solid five minutes looking for the exit from the base. Some rando screams, hey, the fucking churkas are over here. Suddenly, from behind every single corner, a bunch of very angry assholes with batons just spawn in. The entire group decides to fucking lay it to one of the guys still holding onto the pistol while everyone has left even their uniforms behind and are just running. Somehow, evade the Moscow Brigade and manage to get out onto the highway or at least road that goes in front of the base. Everyone just legs it in different directions. Uncle known for being very smart decides to run along the fucking highway. Still getting chased by at least 30 Gotniks at this point. Decides to jump off the fucking road into a bunch of bushes nearby. Gets tangled between bushes and finds a spot where the horde of angry Gopoids can't find him. For about 20 minutes he stays quiet while the patrols go around him being unable to find him. Eventually comes a sergeant with a flashlight. Shines it right into my uncle's fucking face. Found the last Zack. They start sticking all kinds of things into the bushes. Brooms, mops, batons. One guy even pushes a bayonet in. Uncle says, I'll come out if you promise not to hurt me. Sergeant agrees. Uncle goes outside. Instantly gets swarmed and starts getting beat with everything under the sun, including boots. Passes out. Wakes up naked except his underwear. Can't see out of his left eye. Sees the rest of his friends are also next to him and in front of him is a pool. It's the middle of winter so it's pretty cold. Several commanders and NCOs are standing at the edge of the pool. And then there's just an endless horde of Soviet soldiers. The commander gives the order to dunk them. 
They get pushed into the water. Cue half an hour of them trying to climb out, only to get kicked in the faces or hit with brooms. Eventually dragged out of the pool. Get sent to the Soviet military prison. Five by three foot room with a hole to shit in. And that's it. Spend three days there till command staff shows back up and asks what the fuck four discharged soldiers are doing in military prison. Command staff gets pissed and sends them to Sochi to get processed in court. In Sochi, finally let family know that you are alive. Spend another week getting fucked around by cops and petty bureaucrats because your papers weren't signed. Finally get released in fucking Vladikavkaz. With no money, no phone, no way to contact family, and nobody going anywhere towards home. Spend three days trying to exchange whatever is left of the weed that wasn't ruined by the water for a ride to Tbilisi. Finally get home. Georgia leaves the Soviet Union a few months later. We were doing workups out of Pearl. Underway for like three weeks. We're bringing a 60 back on board in rolling deck conditions. With the rast. Got the bird down, but before the pilots lock the rotors, there is this light facing the ground crew that turns green when the rotors are locked into a horizontal plane. This senior chief with the squadron ran into the rotor arc and his head just exploded. Not like decapitated, just gone. I was ship's company and on the aviation firefighting squad and it sprayed this line of blood and tissue over my FFE and I was standing like 30 feet away. Another time we had this PAO dead aboard with some photographers and the navy band and all this other random shit. They put the enlisted guys on the watch bill as lookouts and apparently this one dude was going through some stuff and so just jumped overboard. I was coming off watch and he was AFT lookout, so I walked past him to go talk to a guy back in the hangar. Walked back past his post like 15 minutes later and his binoculars and float coat and headset were stacked up on the deck and he was gone. Got the man overboard alarm sounded, but we never found him. Not my ship, but we were in port in Pearl and one of the CGs, maybe Lake Erie, I think it was a CG, might have been a DDG was doing CIWS maintenance and didn't tag out the gun correctly. Someone in engineering did something and sent transient voltage through the gun and it ended up putting out like a 200 round burst into a playground in a Pearl City elementary school. Fortunately, it was a Saturday, so nobody was there. We were cruising around French Polynesia for a week or so, and for a week or so this albatross kept landing on the bullnose and staying there for hours. It looked like he was trying to dry his feathers or something, but it would spray rivers of liquid bird shit all over the fossils, like unbelievable quantities of it. I was getting off OOD watch and was tired of this fucking bird, so I tried to get rid of it. I took off my blouse and was trying to use it like a matador cape to keep the beak away from me. And he flew at my face, got closer, realized, fuck, this is a big fucking bird. It turned, charged, grabbed my blouse in its beak, snatched it out of my hands and flung it overboard, then chased me all the way back to the weather breaks. All in front of my division who were laughing hysterically. Only had one blouse after that for the rest of the crews. Captain wanted to test out a forward vert rep for some reason. Vert rep on the fossils instead of the flight deck, so we tried it. Was going okay until the last drop. The helo lowered this mail bag thing with a weight in it. A BM put the mail in the bag but took the weight out and didn't replace it. The rotor wash started blowing the bag up into the rotor arc and the air crewman was winching it up as fast as possible but it kept swinging in arcs closer and closer to the rotors swung down and the guy that took the weight out idiot jumped and grabbed it and got the shit shocked out of him but held on and bmc put the weight back in looked for a minute like the 60 was going to go out of control about 70 feet in front of the bridge the BM was fine, got chewed out, but no official punishment, since he also kind of saved the day. Same guy later got drunk and drove his shitbox through like three fences on Ford Island at 3 a.m. and onto the active runway while they were doing F-22 ops. Amazingly didn't get ventilated by the security forces or go to jail. 
Nice guy, but literally one of the dumbest motherfuckers alive. That guy who got caught with an My Little Pony blanket in basic. That guy who kept going back to the same stripper thinking she would eventually fuck him. That guy who waterproofed everything then tried burning his threads off his uniform. That guy who got his weapon issued then almost immediately deep-throated the bolt carrier group. That guy who negligently discharged, tried to do the cleaning drill from scratch, then immediately negligently discharged again. That guy who got drunk and mistook the weapon racks for urinals. That guy who got caught making meth in his room. That guy who took a shit in the hallway. Oh yeah, I forgot. Those infantry guys who ad repped an entire LAV actually got it, then were tasked with censuring it and washing all the dirt slash blood slash cum out of every corner of it daily for the rest of their training. I'm in aircraft maintenance, so lots of surprisingly dangerous stuff, but nothing combat related. Saw a dude get tossed about 10 feet from jet blast because the pilot turned the wrong way. No one really hurt though. The scary one was a dude got his face blown open by a 20 pound chunk of metal. We connect an electric generator to the jet and also to another piece of equipment for cooling air. The air goes through a hose that has a heavy metal collar that doesn't always lock on properly. Dude was still messing with the collar when the other airman turned the airflow on. 40 psi through a 4 inch hose is a lot of pressure. It hit him right in the face. Ended up losing an eye and most of his teeth. Planes is a hard job. Five or six weeks into BMT, my flight wasn't full of tards, so our MTIs didn't come in on Sunday, allowing us to fend for ourselves, get our meals on time, etc. One trainee had severe alopecia, has a waiver to shave his own head and eyebrows by himself severe. Alopecia trainee walks into restroom, walks out a few minutes later. He had drawn eyebrows and a Hitler stash on his face. Everyone had to stifle laughter so CQ didn't hear us over the intercom and send someone to check on us. I never served. This was a co-worker's experience. Be him. Officer in a SLCR company slash battalion. Whatever that never deployed. Giving his troops their weekend safety briefing. This week's topic was domestic violence. Strongly emphasizes that the best way to avoid beating the shit out of your girlfriend is to remove yourself from the situation by any means necessary. Be private fuck up, riding around in the back of your friend's car with your girlfriend. Start getting into a heated argument with her. Fortunately, he paid attention to the safety briefing earlier. All three of his brain cells rub together and he decides, I gotta remove myself from this situation. Private fuckup jumps out of the car that's driving 60 miles per hour down the highway. Somehow he's completely fine. Next week's safety briefing is about jumping out of moving vehicles. Guy in barracks gets caught with a whole bunch of weed. Aw oh, fuck, here comes that webm. Next morning woken up at 0345 for a health and wellness inspection. Platoon sergeant and first sergeant not having it either. Sit in my room with the door propped waiting for CSM. CSM, late as fuck. First sergeant goes looking for him. They found more weed. Turns out, the guy who got caught was hiding his dealer amount of weed in a drop ceiling tile in front of his barracks room. When CSM was walking through, he asked how the guy hit it and the weed tards first sergeant showed him the tile. While they did that, another bag of weed fell down. Apparently, the guy who got busted decided to re-up and then use the exact same hiding place. Because who would think to check there? There was also the retard from the motor pool who tried to run from the MPs on base. His shit-ass 250cc Gixer couldn't actually outrun them. They locked down the base gates for three hours as this dipshit tried to drop the MPs on his putt-putt bike. Got a fucking chronicle. Be me, Lieutenant Corporal Chucklefuck in 29 Palms for ITX early 2020, just before COVID took off. 
get sent to Road Guard, a small unit made up of shit bags, fresh boots, salty lances, and other undesirables from every other unit participating. Shenanigans galore. Guy crafted a flamethrower with a tent pole duct tape monster can and a jet boil. Every night we had story time, where some dude lit a small torch telling us green texts from X. Even the NCOs allow it. Great time even when having to post up in the middle of the fucking desert. To give a bit of context, the duty was basically have some dudes posted by intersections of the various and isolated dirt roads through the sandbox. Post was usually four days on with two to three marines per post to radio slash ferry all traffic while the ranges were hot slash cold. This was to prevent people from accidentally wandering downrange during exercises which involved sniper fire, mortars, artillery, and aircraft munitions. We even got commended by a full bird of courageous actions because of a post radioed a ceasefire for an active arty shoot because a van full of Sodexo chowtards just blew past the checkpoint without stopping, unknowingly driving down range. When we weren't on post, we were allowed to basically chill the fuck out in the hooches. However, one fateful day, shit went fucking bonkers. Be me. Chilling in hooch with buds. One day, one of the dudes I came into the unit with, we'll call him Daxter. He comes in the hooch, shook as fuck. Apparently his roommate that stayed in the rear back in Pendleton ratted him out to the command. Apparently Rat had broken into his locked closet to steal his gear and give to his buds and came across a fuck ton of contraband. Weed, dope, ammo, loaded Mac-10. Holy shit, what the fuck, dot Jif? Battalion knows. They explicitly told his platoon not to let Daxter know. His buds in the platoon find out and tell him anyways. He's in a slight panic, but calms down eventually. Eventually, a week goes by and nothing happens. We all figure he'll just get punished once we're back in Pendleton. ITX ends in about two weeks anyways. Come Friday morning, we do roll call as usual. One at 0600, one at 1800. We all muster. Daxter in the green on green tracksuit as usual. Go about the day lounging around. Jim, PX, and utilizing the jack shack located in an isolated part of Camp Wilson for no apparent reason. Come 1800 roll call, Daxter. Lieutenant Corporal Daxter. Here, somebody mutters it for him before everyone turns around to physically see if he's here. Nobody cares. Continue chilling with buds. 2100. One of them snuck some Benadryl for people that wanted to experience the trips. Three dudes agree. Damn, where's Daxter? I know he wouldn't want to miss this shit. We all realized that besides the morning, we haven't seen him all day. No way. Y'all don't think he. We all scurry. Six of us split up wondering all of Camp Wilson looking and asking around for him. Let one of the corporals know. Oh fuck. Look, it's 2130. If we can't find him by 22, we'll go let, as if on cue, the staff sergeant and first lieutenant in charge of us pass by our tent fast as fuck. Full camis and head straight to the BNHQ tent. Welp, that MP3? Whole camp goes on lockdown with Daxter's platoon combing the entire fucking area for him. His TL comes and interrogates me since I knew him. Threatens hell if I'm lying. Bruh, on my mama, dot gif. Nothing. Next morning got briefed by staff sergeant and first lieutenant. Check Snapchat. Single story from Daxter. Where's Gary? With a low res pick of Gary from Spongebob. The son of a bitch did it, dot jpg. Forgot to mention that while the search was commencing, we had to hide the three dudes tripping absolute balls off the Benny. Funnily enough, we all thought, lol, let's ask the guy higher than a kite if he can see. Daxter. Oh, blessed and guided one, we come to you in search of truth. What is it that you wish to find? Where is our compatriot? Where is Daxter? Does some weird shit with his hands while lying down. Eyes closed. Big gasp of air. Eyes opened as if God graced him. Where is he, foreteller? We're all giggling like retards. He, Daxter Pendleton. He is back in Pendleton. Chuckling fucking stops. 
Are you sure? He just left his room. All I see is what he sees. He now stares at the concrete, his eyes averting. Dude comes down and passes the fuck out. Shit you not, a week later, Barracks duty caught him before our battalion had finished ITX. Before he got sent to the brig, he was basically on house arrest in the barracks. I got to ask him what the fuck happened. Get to talk to Daxter while we're still prepping to go on deployment. Rona panic is now in full swing, so Daxter's paperwork is bogged down. Basically on house arrest in barracks. Chill with him one night, he tells the tale. Apparently the moment he found out he'd been ratted out, he started planning. So he began taking out max amount of money from ATM in Wilson. Every single day. The final day arrives. The night prior, he packed some civvy clothes into a PX plastic bag. After morning roll call, he took the shuttle to the PX. Side note, Staff Sergeant and First Sergeant allowed for us to take the shuttle to Mainside if we gave him the five W's and made sure to be back by evening roll call. Again, Road Guard was the most skate shit. It could rival the fucking X Games. He gets on shuttle in his green on green tracksuit and his PX bag of clothes. Gets to the main side PX. Changes into civvies. Flags a taxi down. Tells him to take him to the nearest Greyhound bus station. Okay. Gets there and feels euphoric. Apparently, I can go fucking anywhere I want. Decides he'll make cash slinging dope in LA. Apparently, he does and makes double the total amount he pulled out from the ATM. Eventually, business has him go down near Oceanside. For those who don't know, it's a military coastal town rectally attached to the south of Camp Pendleton. Apparently, shacks up with some homeless lady. Apparently, a deal goes sideways. He dips in the nick of time as PD show up. He ducked into an alleyway. Almost got away when some waitress or whatever that was taking out the trash opens the door. She screamed because he startled her by accident. PD comes down to see the commotion. Pads him down. Finds stuff. Apparently cop was also marine. Look kid, I'ma take you back on base because right now, you'd go to prison for a long time. I'll let your unit sort it out. Takes him on base. Tells gate guards he just found him passed out drunk. Just gonna drop him off in front of the duty hut. Mind you, he is AWOL status and was declared possibly armed and dangerous. MP were to hold him at gunpoint if found. Dagster has his shirt over his head. MPs allow the cop through because he had his vet card or some shit. Didn't bother to really get a good look at him. Officer pulls right up to barracks. Tells him, all I want to see is you walk into the duty hut. I'ma drive off after that. And what happens next, I don't know. Gets out. Walks into duty hut. Mind you, this was a newly built barracks with a separate duty hut that was like a small conference building. It had a main lobby that led to a back meeting room on the side. Walking straight, you would enter the attached laundry room, and from the laundry room was another door that led outside. He walks across the lobby. He hears the cop pull off. Literally was about to turn the knob to the laundry. Hey, hey, corporal. I think that's the guy. Huh? Whatever. Hey, fucker, get over here. Holy shit, get the fuck on the ground, bitch. I guess my summer vacation is over, dot mp3. The fucked up part was BN Commander was just gonna give him a BN level NJP for the possession of shit. This escalated it to full dishonorable discharge. Moral of the story, padlock your shit, hide the good shit, and beat the fuck out of your rat roommate. Trying to think of a couple more funny ones. Two buddies of mine on a night race, by themselves somehow, don't ask, start exploring the training area. Come across an unattended harbor area of a different unit we didn't like. Start generally fucking with it. The crazier of the two starts taking off his trousers. Other asks why. He says with a crazy grin, We're gonna shit in their Bergens, dude. Other thankfully stopped him, and they headed back. Also, chilling at barracks. 
pissed off officers start walking around, asking everyone, who did it? Was it you? One of them comes up to me and my buddies and says someone shat in the urinals after a party last night and the color sergeant is fucking furious. They leave to go interrogate another room. Color sergeant comes into the room right after them, goes dead silent. You can hear a pin drop. He was a beast of a man. Fucker closes the door, smiles, and whispers, Nobody tell the ITs that I completely made that shit up. Love me color. Captain is a dick. Basically scams a bunch of enlisted guys into investing into his buddy's retirement scam thing. Goes all not my problem when everybody is rightfully pissed. Guys who were scammed went and talked to some other officer about it. Weeks later, there's a big battalion exercise with bigwigs watching. Some guy spikes his canteen with acid. He freaks the fuck out during it and gets relieved. This, combined with people knowing his scam, ruins his career. Guys who got scammed ended up getting taken care of money-wise, though. Be me, Spanish sailor. Graduation day, Friday night. We all come back to the base drunk and some Latina sergeant is talking shit because some retard showed up in jeans. She makes a stand in formation for an hour instead of letting us sleep. The drunkest one falls down and almost splits his head on the concrete. They let us go to sleep now. Everyone is pissed and they can't stop talking about doing something to the cunt. Decide to do something because I want to sleep. Everyone in my dorm had my ass covered. Scream, anal sex, as loud as I can. The echo reverberated within all the base. Five minutes later, they make the fire alarm and everyone comes out of bed ASAP. Some dude was wearing a towel, most of them in pajamas or underwear. Spend three hours standing while sergeant punished the ones laughing. Someone asked the sergeant about what was screamed. Everyone starts laughing, including the sergeant. We start running in the middle of winter in pajamas and underwear. Some dude was barefoot. Finally, she let us sleep. Told everyone it was me when I left the school. Became a legend. Saw a dude get brained by a GP tent central pull during our month-long AT to NTC. And had to be care flighted out due to massive internal hemorrhaging. Poor fellow. He didn't even get full disability. Luckily, he wore a helmet and I couldn't even speak straight. Being National Guard, I'm just happy to chill, work, go to school, and work out on my own terms while pursuing the military. Active duty sounds like a complete nut or shit show, particularly combat arms. Love all you guys, though. Some nerd pissed his bed every night in boot camp. Drill instructors were aware and would have him wash his sheets every night. No idea why he didn't get separated. Some other dude in boot camp regretted his life choices and tried to an hero in the head with his boot laces. Got put on shadow watch with his bed in the center of the bay. Got separated. Some other dude tried to kill himself but guess they felt sorry for him and kept him around. Couldn't rifle qual because suicide risk. I saw radioactive asbestos in the Navy once. USMC Reserve Bat goes to MI for AT. NATO partner nations there for exercise too. All the foreign kata are allowed to go drinking at the E Club. 0311's doing on off drills, one night using the parade ground as makeshift LZ. 0331's posted on guard to redirect drunk foreign soldiers around so they don't get smashed by a Blackhawk or Huey or News Channel 4 Hilo or whatever random RW got shit over to us. Mortars, assault, and rest of goons are back in the barracks. A dozen hammered Polacks come rolling up from the E-Club. One of the Marines on guard duty, Lieutenant Corporal Pibb, is of African extraction. Very polite. Always gets high marks for conduct. Proficiency, not so much though. He walks up to the poles and asks them not to walk across the LZ as there's helos flying in and out. One of the poles sees Pib and shouts, Holy shit, a real nigger! Swings a wild haymaker at Pib, who dodges and raises his rifle. Condition 4. The poles start to square up. One of the other machine gunners sprints up to the barracks, where the rest of the weapons platoon is at, and yells, A drunk pole just called Pib a nigger! Empty the barracks! A collection of 40 gunners, mortarmen, and assault men come flying out in skivvies, flak, and kevlar brandishing e-tools, 
and surround the poles. Pull SNCOs and our first sergeant and ops gunny arrive in the nick of time to prevent a mass casualty event. Write Pib up for showing admirable conduct throughout. TLDR, NATO nearly Article 5'd itself because a drunk pole called someone a nigger. We had this morbidly obese chick. She was useless to the point they didn't let her re-sign when her first four years ran up. She'd been living in barracks so nowhere to go. She ended up going to the men's barracks and dating one of the guys to stay with him. These are four man rooms but a lot of them only had one in them. She'd steal his milk card to go eat. Eventually he got tired of her and kicked her out. She'd move right on to another guy. I don't know how many times she did this before the MPs caught wind of it. When they came to kick her out she tried to run. She was running the hardest she ever had in her life, with the MPs following behind her at a slightly brisk walk. She ended up tripping and eating shit in a ditch. She couldn't get back up, so the MPs dragged her out and escorted her off base. Watched the whole thing from the smoke pit. Wish I had a smartphone at the time. Good times. I fucking missed the smoke pit. Ordy stole two 20mm Safe and tried to fly back home with them and checked luggage. I was ready to launch an aircraft with the CO as the pilot. Then I see the Sergeant Major full on running to the end of the light line to tell the CO that SNM is arrested at the airport. B Brother, Kapuka, on night sentry position in Patrol Harbor. Hear rustling, noise getting closer, shoot towards sound with live rounds. Everyone wakes up. What the fuck, discharge live rounds is instant removal basically. Career over. He shot a wild pig, was told to be gored to death, then ever shoot live round again. Still serving 11 years later. 5R. Their mascot is a tiger which got demoted for pissing on parade ground. Tiger is kept at local zoo called Crocodilus Park. Every year crocs must be moved and their pools cleaned. So every year 20 plus diggers are seen moving 3 to 5 meter long crocs with jaw tied shut. Had an accident one year. Now crocs are sedated. Doing a certification for being able to run a minor chemical weapon incident. Wearing JS list all day. No cheating. Treated like it's real in terms of when I can take it off or break the mask seal. Which means I can't. Finally finish. It's late. Normal dinner hours are over and only extended dinner hours are available, but those close soon. My CO tells me to just go get dinner and we'll do the AAR and clean up tomorrow. No time to go change if I want to eat. I'm wearing UCP, which has soaked up the charcoal from the JS list, and I look pick related. I go to the nearly empty chow hall, exhausted, like on some food, and sit in a corner to eat. A stuffy and perfectly cleaned up LTC sees me from across the building and beelines it to sit down across from me. He's got the evil look in his eye, clearly about my appearance, like he is just going to fuck me up. He asks what I've been up to. Before I even answer, my CO materializes behind me, jumps down, pats an arm on my shoulder, and starts telling him about the chemical weapons training I'd been doing. LTC's whole face changes, from about to fuck me up to impressed. He comes by the next week and tours our shop and pokes around, and I ended up getting a coin out of it. CQB training at Area NNT. Everyone piling up on door to enter it. Some retard walks over to the other side building. Stands there near a window behind enemy dummy targets. Bulk of guys enter a building. Shooting live rounds. One round hit and killed retard soldier. Ranger safety guy and NCOs running the course found not responsible. Accident blamed on DOD for systematic failings for safety stuff. Top brass just blamed NCOs. Guy actually lied on medical forms when he was doing a recruitment process. He had unrealized psych problems. NCO careers over basically, despite fact they followed every fucking procedure correctly. Judge gives one mil to retard's family. His name was Private Chalice. Army survival course. Everyone given task of preparing lecture on certain topic. Abo guy told to find snake and give lecture on poison snakes and first aid. Guy finds docile carpet python. Keep python wet in bag and you're okay. He forgot to keep wetting the bag. Cranky python bit him on the ass. 
four guys and a massive knife to pry Python off, ended up getting medevac to hospital for stitches and infection control. But my abos no survival shit and stuff. We was warriors living off land. Darwin, first marine rotation. Marines get drunk on first night out. See a few cars parked on street. Start flipping them over. They walk home. U.S. government pays out the damages. Disgraced Marines sent home. Marine commander personally apologizes to local residents. Invited local residents to open day to see all Marines do live demonstrations and locals ride on Marine Amphib vehicles. Subsequent Marines kept on tight fucking leash. They set up a PX on base for those Marines to keep them happy. The guy who traded his first duty station in Turkey for Minot to share a station with his fiance. She cheated a week later. The one recycled BMT trainee who tried to sneak back into the squadron he got kicked out of and successfully made it into his old bay before being caught by the MTIs. The starving Russian soldier in Bosnia who tried to get my dad to marry his sister after he gifted them some MREs and Marlboros.